Hey everyone, what's up? This is Simon from the Ionic Academy, back with a new updated tutorial on how you can use SQLite in your Ionic application using Capacitor. So, there were a lot of questions about SQLite, the last tutorial is already a bit outdated, so we're doing this with Capacitor 5, uh, and we're gonna go through the basic usage of SQLite with Capacitor. Quick note up front, there is an in-depth course inside the Ionic Academy on using SQLite where we also discuss things like debugging the SQLite database on both iOS and Android, how you can get that file and how you can even add web support to use this in the browser. That was actually pretty epic, but it takes a few steps. So today we will just focus on the basic usage. Now. I've already started a blank new Ionic application using Angular, but you could easily do this with React or Vue as well. Uh, you could probably just put in my code into ChatGPT and it would be transformed to React. Then we need the Capacitor Community SQLite plugin. And I will also add the Capacitor Splash Screen plugin for a specific reason that I'm going to tell you in about eight minutes. All right, um, I will also generate a service for my Angular application and then I'm just gonna do the native build because we're gonna have to test this natively. As I said, I won't do the web stuff in here. So with that being said, let's get started. Um, actually, let's start by adding a bit of stuff above here in our database service. So this will be the database name and this is just an interface for a user. So we're just gonna do like adding little users, setting them active, displaying them in a list. Could also be to-dos, products, notes, could be whatever. I just had to pick some topic, don't blame me. All right, in the database service, let's start by defining a private, no, private data, that would be even more private, right? Um, a SQLite connection, that's gonna be new SQLite connection. Um, and then we pass in the capacitor, SQLite plugin here. So this defines our SQL um, connection. On top of that, we also need the database. Um, we're gonna define this later. So let's just define SQL um, DB connection. And yes, this will be defined. Angular, just trust me. Also, I wanna keep track of my users. In the past, I would have used um, I would have used, what would I have used? A, a behavior subject, but we're cool kids. We're using Angular 16, so let's also use a signal. Now I can hear you scream, oh Simon, why are you doing the new things? We hate this. No, it's cool, it's cool, and actually it's pretty easy. So, gonna be of the type user array, and if I don't watch out, I'm doing a mistake, so that's better. A signal of the type user array, and if you want to, you can even add the type in here. So that would be a writable uh, signal from Angular core with type user array. So now if you have that line in your code, you're absolutely on the, on the eh, it's not bleeding edge, it's not is it cutting edge maybe, um, but you're just so cool. All right, um, the first function I'm gonna set up is like an initializer. So yeah, we could call it init. Also, I could call it initialize plugin. I think that's more appropriate in this case. So what we wanna do is we wanna initialize the connection to our database. And to do this, we now create a connection. We use with the create connect fun uh, create connection function, a few values. So first one is database. That's gonna be the name for my database. I call it my user DB. Uh, it could be, of course, anything else. Encrypted, no, I don't wanna use encrypted today. It just makes things harder to debug. <laughs> um, mode, we have no encryption. Version, we are setting this to one and read only, we're setting this to false. So this is the database we wanna run our transactions on. And then we have to call this dot database open to open a SQLite database connection. If you open it, you should probably also close it at some point, but uh, since we just have the app open, uh, I will keep it like this. Now, what I also wanna do in here is of course define my table. In the past, we had a different tutorial here on building a SQLite Ionic app with Capacitor in which we actually used um, a JSON to initialize the database. So that way would actually still work. You can check this out on DevTactic on my blog. 
um, you could have that file as well in your Ionic application and just initialize from a JSON file. But it's somewhat of like a, a little bit special case. I don't know if a lot of people are actually using this import export JSON stuff. So instead, let's just define the schema by creating a simple SQL statement. Create table, if not exist users, with an ID, name, and active. I also found out, or uh, yeah, I found out that uh, there's actually no Boolean for SQLite, so just like the basic stuff. So we're just gonna use active zero or one uh, in this case. Now, to run this transaction, Copilot already gives us the code. We're gonna have to execute the SQL command and that's gonna be how we do most of the other stuff in our application as well. Once we've done this, I also uh, wanna load my initial lo uh, loser. <laughs> oh, we're having a good day today. Um, I wanna load my users. So I'm gonna call this load users. Oh, I always do a good one. Uh, it's always best when you're not prepared for your own jokes. So I wanna load my users in here, um, simply because then we can set the data to our, ooh, oh, Copilot, you're really smart. Yeah, um, mostly correct. So we're getting the users by calling this db.query. So that would be our query function. Uh, instead of execute, which would just execute the statement. Um, here we can also pass in values. Uh, I wanna select star from users, of course, and then I don't call next, but set on users dot uh, values, and this can be undefined. So let's also add a fallback. Uh, if users values is not defined, we're just gonna set our users to an empty array. So while we initialize the plugin, so we set up the connection, we create the table if it doesn't exist, we execute this, we load the users, and finally we return true. We can actually do this before because we don't really uh, worried about this one. Now, we're coming back to, was it eight minutes? It was almost eight minutes. We're coming back to what I told you before while we're using the Splash Stream plugin. So, in order to not make any kind of loading requests or adding even adding requests in your application up, uh, too early while the plugin is not even initialized, we have to make sure that this part here is finished. How do we do this? We can do this with a little trick. If you enjoy tips and tutorials like this, you will love what I've created inside the Ionic Academy. The Ionic Academy is the best place to learn Ionic fast with practical courses ranging from UI development to connecting to APIs or using services like Firebase. On top of that, you get support in our private Discord server. You get a weekly email about all the things going on in the Ionic ecosystem. So join today at ionicacademy.com. So in my app component, by the way, I'm using standalone modules, but that's not like super important here. In my app component, which is the first thing that runs, I'm gonna inject database uh, database service, and I'm gonna do a little um, async init app. Yeah, I could also, could I use ng on init? Mm, I don't know. I actually wanna do this in a more, in the earliest possible way, and that would be the constructor. So I'm doing it from here, and in my init app, I'm gonna call this database initialize plugin. So nothing happens until it is initialized and only then I'm gonna hide the splash screen. So the splash screen stays open. It won't stay open for like seconds. It's just like probably 200 milliseconds or even less, but it's enough to make sure that we don't have any other race condition going on. So this is the simple trick and it took us eight minutes to do it. Oh, that was like a perfect estimation. Okay, now let's add three more functions to the service. And they're gonna be the basic CRUD operations. I can also add like here, CRUD stuff. So everything that we need to do, add user, insert into users, and then we have the values, and then we execute the query, and we update the users. And the same pattern for all three functions. So update by ID, we're just setting the active field, we're loading it, and then load users will simply update the data. And again, delete will delete it. Now with that in place, and of course you can have like a, a lot more advanced queries uh, in your application. Like if you're good with SQL and no more than insert, update and delete like me, then you can of course do a lot more. But anyway, let's continue to the homepage. And on my homepage, 
Uh, I want to get, uh, that's not the one. This is the one I wanted. So let's inject my database in here, private database, database service. And to get the users, we're going to use the signal we defined. So this dot database users, and we call it as a function. Uh, oh yeah, we have to, I think we have to call get users, right? Yeah, I made this field private, so it's not uh, changeable from the outside world. So let's add a function here to uh, return this dot uh, users does not exist. Uh, yeah, it should be called users. Okay, and then yes, I'm sorry about that one, but that one was important. So we can now just call get users here and that should be fine. Um, I feel like this should actually return it like this. Um, <laughs> well, well, we're gonna try it like this. Let's, let's try it like this. Uh, normally we have to call the signal in another way. So I'm not exactly sure what we're gonna get back here. Nonetheless, uh, let's also add a field to add a new user. So we're gonna just lead a little uh, ng model here. And then we need three functions to create the user, um, to update the user or to delete the user. I'm gonna import my interface and this will take care of all the rest. And now for the homepage, I will just quickly bring in some easy code uh, which iterates our users Kanban to ng model. Yep, that's actually a nice error. So if you're using standalone components with Ionic, you have to make sure that you import the, all the important stuff. So if you're using ng model, it's the forms module. And I think we probably also use the common module. Um, then I can just iterate my users. Ah, now I'm calling this correctly. So here we have the writable signal and by calling it, we're actually getting the right value. We can update the user. We get the user name and we have a button to delete the user. Now let's give this one a try. Um, let's see, we're gonna go with Ionic cap build iOS. Uh, we could also do run iOS. I actually had some problems with the live reload. I'm not sure if it was about um, the plugin, if it was about Angular 16 and standalone components. I just just hadn't, wasn't really lucky with that one. So I'm just gonna deploy it directly um, to my simulator here. So let's see, um, we got some locks in here. We can probably delete this. Let's give it a try. Uh, first user, we're gonna add that one and it appears. And we also see some nice locks in here, uh, values. You can even do some cool stuff uh, if you're using a signal. So you could do something like use effect. Uh, no, <laughs> use effect. <laughs> Use effect was uh, React, I'm sorry. Uh, so I could do something like users changed. Uh, and then I could do the probably, I don't need to call it users value. Um, mm -mm -mm. Just a few more brackets. No, it is not use effect, sorry. It is just an effect that is called um, when the signal changes. So that effect runs. You can also do computed where you compute two signals into each other, but this is not a tutorial about signals. Um, it's maybe the first time we're actually using signals here with Ionic and Angular, but nonetheless, we should also now see, I added something last time. And now that the app comes up, we get the data because it was stored. So we can also put in more data. We can update the user. We can add more users and delete them. And of course, uh, whatever I put in, if I now reload the application, it will come back up because it's stored in SQL light. And again, if you would need more in the information about using SQL light, check out the course in the Ionic Academy, join us. You can also find the full source code for this tutorial in the Ionic Academy, where we also do the debugging fun, where we add web support. So then we could run that application exactly like it is on the web with just a few tiny changes. But Nonetheless, I hope this gave you a first introduction in how you can use SQLite currently with Capacitor. It's a lot easier than it was in the past. So this was Capacitor 5 now. We don't need to change anything in the native classes and files, what we had to do before. 
just make sure that your plugin is initialized correctly, that you go through this and you don't make any calls before your database connection is established. So that's the really most important part that you should take away from this quick win. And of course, if you're not yet subscribed, hit the subscribe button below the video and please click like so this video reaches more people. And I will hopefully catch you in the next video. So until then, happy coding, Simon.